Something incredible happened at the end of episode 6 of what I hope is the first and only season of The Book of Boba Fett. Something I didn't think was possible. Cobb Vance, the Marshal of Freetown, having just earlier that day disrupted the local drug trade, is greeted by a mysterious stranger. The stranger, known to Vance of the Clone Wars as Cad Bane, offers Vance an ultimatum. Let the drugs, known as Spice, flow, and Freetown will be left alone. But if the Marshal chooses to interfere, the Pike Syndicate, some sort of interplanetary crime organization, will destroy Freetown. And that's what had happened. That's when I saw the beautiful thing that the Book of Boba Fett was missing. Conflict. Vanth wants to keep his city safe. But he also knows that the drug trade will continue to hurt innocent people, and that's a bad thing. On top of that, while ignoring the Pike Syndicate may protect Freetown in the short term, being under the thumb of organized crime will inevitably lead to more death in the future. On top of that, if Vanth shows weakness in this moment, his leadership may fall into question. On top of that, the stranger seems ready to shoot Vanth if he refuses. And on top of that, a trigger-happy deputy seems poised to shoot the stranger, which will force Vanth's hand. It was, by a country parsec, the most successful seed in the season. The first moment, The Book of Boba Fett, a series that at least in theory drew heavily from gangster and western films, managed to generate the tension that both genres are known for, and Boba Fett was not in it. In fact, I don't even think he learned that it happened. And that illustrates a fundamental issue with the Book of Boba Fett, the design flaw that left the series vulnerable to complete destruction. Boba Fett is an awful protagonist. Now, I don't think this was inevitable because of the conceit of the series. In fact, I think there exists another character in the Book of Boba Fett who would make a far more compelling protagonist, and I'll get to them later. But I don't even think Boba Fett, the character shown briefly in the background of the Star Wars films and reintroduced in The Mandalorian, has some sort of fundamental character trait that makes him poorly suited to lead this series. But Boba Fett, as written in The Book of Boba Fett, should not be allowed to lead an Ewok line dance, let alone a multi-million dollar Disney Plus show. I am baffled by the choices they made. Flummoxed discombobulated. When the series began, I had a fear that Boba Fett would become a cipher, a character written as broadly as possible onto whom the audience can project their own beliefs and values. A blank slate. He is something much dumber. Boba Fett says he has wants and needs and a guiding ideology. He wants to rule with respect. He wants to protect the people of Mos Espa. And he has specific skills. He's a strategist. He's tough. And he's one of the deadliest men in the galaxy. But every time Boba Fett gets a chance to act on any of those character traits or demonstrate any of those skills, he does the opposite. Instead of ruling with respect, Boba rules with slightly less fear than the other guys, but still fear. He doesn't have any plan to win over the hearts and minds of the people outside of telling one water merchant to lower his prices. But most of Boba Fett's leadership strategy seems to be walk around with a gun, assassin friends, and armed guards. Sounds like fear to me. He won't torture, but besides that, it doesn't feel like much of a departure from Jabba or Bib Fortuna or any of these guys in the show. Speaking of that, not to nitpick, not unlike my podcast, but mostly nitpicking, but what does Boba have that makes him the Daimyo? He does not have any troops to enforce his command outside of Fennec and the two Gamorreans. He has control of Jabba's palace and his money, but when he comes in and says, I'm the new Daimyo now, like, why would anybody care? Mos Espa is a huge place, and Boba seems to have nearly enough people under his command to safely patrol one street. It seems like the reason Jabba was such a big deal wasn't that he had the palace or called himself the Daimyo. It had to do with his backing from the larger Hut family, as seen when the twins arrive on that wonderful litter. But I just, it's like if you killed the head of the entire crime family of New York, as well as almost everyone in the family, and then just walked up to everyone they did business with and said, I'm the crime family now, and expected all the actual crime families to go, oh well, he called it, oh, shucks and gosh, I guess that means he gets all the money. Like, Boba doesn't even have some sort of ceremonial ring or a rancor originally or anything like that that could demonstrate his leadership. It's such a bizarre plan, which fails at every turn. Anyway. Boba also says he wants to protect the people and he's a cunning strategist, but when he learns that the Interplanetary Crime Syndicate is sending an army to kill him specifically, 
Fett chooses to fight them not in his heavily fortified palace on the outskirts of town, but in the streets of Mos Espa to ensure that Boba and his team squander any home field advantage and cause as much collateral damage as possible. He loses fights left and right. He's surprised by Black Chrysanthemum. He's surprised by those bunch of assassins with shields that poke him with the electric sticks. He's even surprised by the Pike Syndicate after Fennec assures him that the Pike Syndicate can't sneak up on him. They literally sneak up on him one second after that and all show up. It's like, what, what have you even been doing this whole time? What are you good at? But the larger issue with Boba's ambitions on crime lording comes from his apparent disinterest in actually being a crime lord. He doesn't seem to enjoy the sitting around parts or the management parts. He doesn't seem to have any strong connection to Tatooine, besides that the Tuscans found and nursed him to health before they were all slaughtered as an unintended consequence of Boba's own actions. He doesn't seem to want the money that comes with being a crime lord. And at the end of the season, regardless of everything that has happened with the rancor and the disarray in the city, Boba walks through town with Fennec and the people smile and bow at him and Boba complains. He even says, we're not suited for this. And then Fennec replies, if not us, who? Who you ask? Hmm, good question, Fennec. If only there was a character with a strong connection to Tatooine who is motivated to keep the peace and whose morality would make navigating the criminal underworld difficult. Also, handsome. Oh look, it's Cobb Vanth, played by Hitman's own Timothy Oliphant. He was one of the fan favorite characters of season two. He isn't currently doing anything and he is perfectly positioned to do everything Boba Fett did except in a compelling way. And right off the bat, yes, I think you could sell this show, The Ballad of Cobb Vance. I mean, either way, it should have been called Ballad. Why is this a book? Why, are you, why is this the book of Boba Fett? But the Star Wars name carries weight and a spinoff focusing on a character developed during the Mandalorian show makes complete sense. And a good show is more important than a recognizable one. Word of mouth is what makes or breaks a show like Boba Fett. And in my experience, that word of mouth was not good. Outside of big Star Wars fans, I don't know anyone who would recommend this show. And even the big fans wrecked it with that enthusiasm of someone who's like, yeah, I don't know, you, it, it's, pre it's pretty good, you know, you might like it. But nothing near the enthusiasm of like, listen, you gotta put down everything and watch The Mandalorian right now because it's amazing. Plus, if you throw in an existing marketable character from other Star Wars stuff, and I don't think it's necessary, but you know, money, have Darth Maul show up as the bad guy or something, or Kira, or some other crime boss who you would assume is still alive. Where's Dengar, the people love Dengar, or Lando, maybe he's governing this part of the galaxy, him and Lobot can stop over, or force Vance to interrupt with the guy who says Mando, he's probably got a name, right? Is that Grief Karga, there you go, or Miggs Mayfield, he's wandering around somewhere. What I'm saying is you can use some of those other characters to prop up the show if you really want Disney, you don't need to though. Because you don't need cameos when you have a compelling story, and the story of the Ballad of Cobb Vanth works in ways that the Book of Boba Fett never could, because at the heart of this story, you have a man with a set of values and a real threat to what he cares about in the form of the spice trade. Vanth is, as Bane points out, vulnerable without Fett's armor, so right there, scenes get stakes. Unlike the Boba Fett scenes where he can be endlessly shot or shocked and he's just kind of annoyed. And the coolest thing is, none of the structure of the show would really need to change. Here's my new outline, which I threw up on Twitter a couple days ago, twitter.com slash nandoviewmovies. So you start with episode six. Cobb is the marshal of Mos Pelgo, which is now called Freetown. Things are going pretty well. He intercepts the drug convoy. Uh-oh. Then Cad Bane shows up and gives a warning. Now Cobb has to do something about that, but he doesn't know what, because he's not gonna let this spice go through his city, but he also isn't capable of dealing with whatever the Pike Syndicate is. So then second episode, same as original Boba Fett episode one. Cobb goes to Mos Espa and starts combing through the criminal underworld. Maybe he starts meeting some of these characters that are hanging around here. Third and fourth are more of that, meeting Chrysanthemum, the motorcycle gang, Fennec and Boba Fett if you want, maybe they're still hanging around. All the while, he is making friends and learning about the local government, becoming a man of the people, and he's learning about their customs, what makes them tick, and learning that, hey, you know what? I was never a big fan of these city folks, but maybe they're not so bad. Maybe there's not that much that separates us from them. And then at the end of episode four, we get the actual ultimatum from Cad Bane, which is leave all of this drug stuff going on. We will let you do your thing in Freetown, and hey, we'll even kick you over a few credits. Cobb, 
politely and handsomely declines and then Cad Bane comes back with, okay, well, we'll see you in 24 hours. Episode 5 can be the Mandalorian episode if you want. I think it was okay. I, I, like, I liked it as an episode and it's always fun to see him. Episode 6, we assembled a team and it is nothing but planning. We're learning the geography of where this fight is going to take place. Maybe it's Freetown. Maybe Boba Fett is held up in Jabba's old palace and that's where we're going to have this fight. I think it's fun to reincorporate some of these things we kind of already know about the location, the Sarlacc, the Rancor Pit, all that stuff. And by God, do not do all this Yoda stuff. I have my own thoughts about the Luke thing. I think sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it feels kind of evil like with Tarkin and this guy is a dead guy who we are resurrecting with CGI. But even with living actors, I don't understand why we're using computer programs to voice them. But it looks great. But also, it is wild that this show is now required reading for Mandalorian Season 3 or the first episode of Mandalorian Season 3 is just going to be this again. Either one of those options is not good. And then the finale, Episode 7, is The Magnificent Seven. Same structure too. Cobb recruits Mando, Fennec, Sandy, and the four bikers. And we have the big showdown. Maybe if you want here, Boba can help out with the Rancor at the end. But this is Cobb rallying the citizens of Mos Espa and Freetown against the Pike Syndicate, saving the day. I think part of the problem here is Boba Fett has become what I think is a big problem with Star Wars in general, a precious character. A character who they do not want to do anything dangerous with. He can't be bad. He can't be too good. He has to have a very simple and kind of ambiguous set of values. So. If they want to put him in some project in the future, they can put him there, regardless of whether he belongs there or not. Even if he would never want to go there, because that's not what he's ever done up until this point, I think a lot of those same issues reared their ugly head in Episode 9. So maybe because of that, the Book of Boba Fett was doomed from the start. But that's what I like about Cobb Vanth, and a lot of the other characters that we've met in Mandalorian. Not only are they new, but they don't come with the baggage and expectations that Boba Fett comes with. And yes, I'm sure that name makes it a lot easier to sell the series, but the word Star Wars should be as big as the word Marvel in terms of you see that on screen and you go, oh, cool, one of these things. I'll probably watch it if I hear it's good. Like, I know a lot of people who have no idea what Moon Knight is and they're interested. And I'm not saying that always works, but I don't think Disney needs to be sitting in a room with people and dials turning the dials whenever they see a name that they kind of recognize and then look at who got the highest percentage of awareness and make a show about them. The Star Wars brand needs to be bigger than characters, which means you can take a story like the Book of Boba Fett and say we can do this, but without Boba Fett. Let's elevate Cobb Vance to that level. And we'll get something really cool. This got kind of ranty at the end. I did not expect that. But hey, here we are. I mean, if you want a real rant on Nebula, I made a full bonus video. Not even like extra content for this. Like another video that I just did not want to put onto YouTube because I didn't want to have to deal with the comment section. In defense and offense of this one spin move that everybody on Twitter was talking about. I think it is interesting and emblematic of some of the issues with the Star Wars community and also some of the Book of Boba Fett's failures. So if you want to watch that video, you can check that out right now on Nebula. You guys know Nebula. It's a subscription streaming service that I helped to create. All my videos go up there early, ad-free, and sometimes I'll upload a full companion video. So this is something that is not going on YouTube at all. It's just my thoughts. I get into some of my issues with the Book of Boba Fett, some of the things it was trying to do and maybe did wrong. And I think by the end of the video, you will understand where I'm coming from. And we have partnered with this video sponsor, Curiosity Stream, for a bundle that gets you a year of Curiosity Stream's high quality documentary content on stuff like swords and squirrels and space. There's so much good space stuff if you're interested in that. Documentaries like Destination, Pluto Beyond the Flyby, this whole series is about how we have gone to other planets, sent probes and stuff like that. And this one is about the New Horizon project to get to Pluto. And the coolest part is, as part of this bundle, you get a subscription for a year to Curiosity Stream and Nebula for $15, $15 for the entire 
year, you get everything on Curiosity Streams catalog, and you get all these Nebula videos, including my video in defense and offense of the spin. Go to curiositystream.com slash Nando. Thank you so much to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. Thank you to everybody that listens to the podcast and everybody that follows me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Nando Love you guys. Stay safe.